What is the point of using TypeScript if you have to use the any type every time you use an API because you don't have the types? Or if you have to rewrite all the types manually when they are available in an open API file definition? Especially if you have to keep them in sync every time the API changes. I found the perfect solution. And today, my friends, I will save you from the evil any type when querying APIs. Let's go. Full type safety to query APIs have multiple advantages. First, you avoid typos in endpoint URLs because it's so easy to make little mistakes there. Also, you avoid missing or invalid required parameters as TypeScript will show you the expected types. Finally, you keep the response types always in sync with the API and know the available attributes thanks to code completion. Good types definition solves all those problems at compilation time rather than breaking your app in production. The solution I will show you implies two requirements. Firstly, an API with an open API definition. The open API definition can be either in JSON or YAML format. Its purpose is to list all the endpoint with their input and output schemas. As you can see here on the example, we have an open API definition which lists all the paths of the API together with the input and output schemas. It's useful because it contains all the information necessary to generate good types definition. Secondly, we need two NPM packages. First, OpenAPI TypeScript, whose job is to convert the OpenAPI definition into TS types, and OpenAPI Fetch, whose job is to build a fetch client from the types generated by OpenAPI TypeScript. We can now see the magic happen. So, the first thing we need is an API for the demo, and I'll do it with FastAPI using Python. So the beauty of FastAPI is that it can automatically generate an open API specification for your backend. You can see it at localhost port 8000 by default slash openapi.json. For the purpose of this demo, we'll make a simple to-do app. Let's take a quick look at the code. So we import the basic stuff we need to define our FastAPI application. We create the app here and then we create two classes for the schemas of the input and output of our endpoints. The first schema defines the DTO of the to-do object. So it has an ID, a title, and a completed flag. DTO stands for data transfer object. So it's just the types of the object we receive and send from our API. The second schema is for the creation of the to-do, and it just takes a title. Then we define two, two endpoints. First, a get endpoints slash to do's to get all the to do's. And then a post endpoint on slash to do's to create a new to do. This one takes the create to do schema, so just an object with a title attribute, create the to do, appends it to the list, and return the, late, the latest element. Finally, to run our server, we just use uvcorn and we run the application. So here is the file FastAPI generated for us. On openapi.json, we can see here the definitions. We have in the path here our two routes, so slash to do's, the get and post methods. And we have all the descriptions and most importantly, the schemas. Here the to do and here the create to do. And at the end, you can see the definition of all the components. So here the to do DTO contains an ID, title and completed flag. And it's the same for the create DTO. So that's the file we'll use to then generate our types with TypeScript. Now let's take a quick look at the front end setup. So for the app, I use the React router with TonStack query. Then we need to install two important packages OpenAPI fetch and OpenAPI TypeScript, those two here. Now to automate all the type definitions and client generation, we need to add three scripts. First of all, we have the OpenAPI get script. This one fetch the OpenAPI JSON file from the backend and saves it to the OpenAPI.json file at the root of the project. So you can see here just a curl and then we cast the output to a file just at the root of the project. Then we have the OpenAPI create script. This one generates the types from the OpenAPI file and saves the output to here the app libdata openapi.ts file. 
So here we get all the types we need to generate our client later. And finally, to automate everything and make it simpler to use, I define a third script, OpenAPI Refresh. This one simply calls OpenAPI Get and OpenAPI Create, one after the other. Now we are ready to define our API client and to create the functions that we will use to fetch and uh, modify, create new to-dos. So here in the client.ts file, within the lib and data folder, we import the path from our openapi.ts file generated by openapi.typescript, if you remember. We also import the create client function from the openapi fetch package. It will build our client to fetch and interact with our API. So we create a, a variable just to store the base URL. So here we have localhost.8000, which is our fast API server. And here we create the client. And it's as simple as specifying the base URL, giving it the types here. And um, here you can add additional options. So for instance, you can use generic um, attributes from fetch, like credentials include. It will be used for all call you make from your client to the API. The next step is to define the function for the query and the mutation. So here we have the get to do's query, which uses our client. And as you can see here, it's fully type safe. What I mean is here, if I do client dot, I have the completion that says get. So I go to get and here, when I want to type the URL, you can see that it's automatically, it's automatically completed by VS code. So it's impossible to make a typo or you will get an error at the compilation and you can correct it before going to production. Super useful. So here we define the function to get our to-dos and here we define our function to create a new to-do. So here the post that takes the title as the input. Finally, we can create our home page that will display the application. So here in the roots folder, I define the home, the home page. The home page here imports our two queries and mutations. So get to do query and create to do mutation. Then we create a default function for the page, which is a React component. And here we have our new to do state that we will use to create a new to do. And we have our query here to fetch all to do's and the mutation to create a new, a new one. Then it's your usual React code. So here I define a few divs and so on, but just to show you, here you have the, um, the input, we have the button that will create a new to-do. Here we have the list of our to-dos. As we refetch the to-dos when we create a new one, here, get to do that refetch, it will automatically refetch and it will be displayed. So I will show you now the results of all this code. Here is our simple to-do list application. As you can see, we have the input and the add button. We can add a to-do by typing and pressing enter. And as we create new to-dos, it gets synced automatically because we use the use mutation to invalidate the query we define using TanStack query. So it's always in sync with our server. It was just to show you that it works end-to-end. -end. We have our openapi.json file. Everything is generated using openapi TypeScript and fetch. And finally, you just implement the business logic in your application and it works. It's time for a quick summary of the types of errors this workflow will save you from. So the first one is the typo in the URL. If we use the client here, we want to get the to-dos and make a typo, Hop, you get an error. Super useful already. Then we have the case where you forgot or you provide an invalid input to a root. So let's check with the post, post query. So here, let's say I post to slash to do's and I forget the input, I get an error. 
or let's say here I make a typo and here instead of title I, I put name let's say up you get another error it's super useful because now it's impossible for you to make a mistake when you make a call to your post um, to your post endpoints that necessitate a specific schema as, as the input the next type of error you will not make anymore is uh, trying to access a non-existent property. So here if I go to home, the output of the API is typed. So here if I try to access an attribute that does not exist, like name, I will get an error. And here as I press dot, I get all the attributes auto-completed for me automatically. Finally, I will remind you the entire workflow. So you start from your API here, and you add new routes or you modify existing code, changing the schemas uh, of the input or output. Then you go to your JavaScript project. The API can be defined in any language or uh, framework. You just need to have an open API.json file generated. So then you go to your JavaScript project here, and you run this command. So open API refresh. It will fetch the openapi.json and generates all the types. Then you go to your client file, where you define all your queries and mutations, and you spot all the red lines in your ID and fix the code that is out of sync, or add new functions for the new routes in your, in your backend. Finally, you go to your React components, and you just use tonstack query or whatever you're using, and there you have it. Full type safety between your front end and your back end with zero manual type definitions. A tiny 6 kilobyte runtime, automatic type updates and great IDE support. So drop a like and a subscribe if you want more hacking tips. And you can check out the description below, there is a link to the GitHub repository so you can reproduce this project and start using it in your own workflows. See you in the next one.